It's funny because when I was a kid, I would have never imagined me being able to like do the stuff I do now and be comfortable. But now I'm just at a place of, you know, it all just helped me get so comfortable with myself that I don't even look at it as crazy. Hey everybody, it's William Carter here with InquisitiveCarter.com. You know, the first time we talked when like 2018, you told me like, yeah, you get ready to move to LA. You was gonna do this. You were gonna do that. You were gonna like really get into it, and yeah. you really got into it. So how does that feel for you? Oh gosh, it's been a journey, honestly. And the pandemic, in some ways, has been really helpful for that. Because when I first moved here and we very first talked, I don't remember if I had actually started up flip flop yet. I don't think I had. I think I was, that was still the first month of me living here. And, you know, I was trying to see what I was going to do in my first um, comedy show, Flip Flop, that I did the pilot whole pitch for and pilot screening premiere tour for. That really, um, I'm glad that I did that right before the pandemic because it ended up kind of being the vehicle that's helped launch everything else because that got picked up by Brandon TV Studios at the beginning of the pandemic. And so we still are about to shoot season one because it was very important for me not to shoot during like the height of the pandemic because I just wanted everything centering because it's like, you know, it's a whole season one and I didn't want to have a lot of pandemic stresses, but it opened the door for a lot of other projects. Like people last September when I posted that it was picked up, I just started getting hit up by people from all directions wanted me to um, you know, produce their projects. And I also had time because of the pandemic to write more of my own projects. And so it's been really cool to just in general get to make a whole bunch of different genres now. That's what I really wanted to do because I started um, in comedy with the web series. And now it's like there's all types of genres and projects going on, series, films, and just lots of different stuff. So it's been really cool. It's It's been a journey. You're about to shoot seems the one and not, I'm not even gonna hold you that's a good thing you kind of waited because it kind of would be a bad thing if you shot your first season and you know everybody get COVID you got shut down everything you know it's like that's not really how you want to start out you know right I want every, exactly because when you have an episodic project that's going to be multiple seasons you just you want to be so careful with the way that you're structuring everything and if it's shot while the pandemic is so you know up in the air it just would have been a more negative experience like I would have felt like I had to sacrifice certain things or like I don't know I just wouldn't have felt as good about it so it, I, I'm happy that the way we did it was we wrote the season one earlier in the pandemic I think we finished writing it um at the end of January and then I was like okay we're just gonna keep it in pre-production and wait until things are more opened up to shoot so we'll be shooting it this fall so yeah I it's been nice to get to kind of have like I guess a little gap to also do other things and other projects. Love to see it, love to see black people strive, love to see black people create, you know, it's a beautiful thing to witness, right? But like you said, you've gone through different genres, you're, you've done different things, you just said, you're about to shoot season one of Flip Flop, you did risk the film, um, working on the maybe next Christmas. So what, would, what are you working on right now that's about to come out next or come out within maybe the end of the year when it's early next year? So uh, one of the projects that I'm really, really excited about is The Unhinged. It's a black gay thriller film. So this is coming out right around Halloween season. You know, I wanted to have a little something for spooky season. And Robert Graves, he hit me up and like sent me this uh, trailer for basically, you know, a thriller concept that was black and gay. And we hadn't really yet connected that much about work and stuff like that. We had supported each other kind of on social media, but this was the first time that like he had sent something and was like, you know, maybe we could do something. And I was like, let's make something. So we wrote it in like a weekend and then we produced it in the next month we were filming it. And I'm really excited about that one that's going to come out um, right around Halloween season. And so that's one of the big things I've been working on. Uh, we also will be filming, like you said, maybe next Christmas, the Christmas movie um, next month, and that'll come out Christmas season. And we just finished our crowdfunding. And I just want to thank the 217 people who helped us to raise $11,400 for the film because, you know, we budgeted in 
pay for our team members and you know also just everything for the locations and festive christmas decorations and everything so i'm really excited that we get to do that one because i love christmas movies um we also are filming the pilot for ambition which is a black drama series uh that we will be filming out here in la and that one's mostly about you know kind of um moving out to la and pursuing creative dreams and how it can be navigating the industry you know as a young black professional and young black aspiring creative and how things can kind of be you know crazy and dramatic in ways so that one is like you know kind of my hollywood project you could say like one that covers that type of stuff so i'm a writer producer on that and yeah we're filming flip-flops season one this fall so i'm very excited for that let me look up on my board. Is there anything I'm forgetting? Well, there's, so there is Alphabets, a black queer sketch show, comedy sketch show that we are still in development for. So we're trying to figure out when exactly we're going to start filming. Um, Jamel Tyre pitched that one to me. And so we've been working on that one slowly just because with the pandemic, you know, we just want to make sure that we assemble the exact right team, the exact right attachments. But I'm really excited about that one because, you know, I do love comedy. And so having that black queer sketch show is going to be important in general for the culture. My man just said, let me look up on the board. I know that's right. You better just run down the resume. You better just let people <laughs> know what you got going on. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm trying. I'm trying. I really love all these different genres. So I'm like, really, I've been very careful to just, you know, pick the right ones for my slate. Like, I'm like, okay, we got some funny. We got some scary. We got some holiday. We have some drama. Um, so yeah, I want just a nice, diverse mix of projects. So now I'm ready, especially um, the Halloween one, because, you know, Black people, so you know, at least there's gonna be one, at least one black person survives to the end, you know. Exactly. Right, because it's an all black cast. So, like, yeah, maybe a black person will die, but you know, everybody else will be black. So it won't be like the black person being the first one killed. It'll be only black people killed. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> but no, I'm that actually is like literally that one that we wrote and produced in like a month that, that's one of my favorite projects probably that i've ever done because i love that genre like i love watching those fatal attraction type of just you know crazy thrillers or just you know certain things with different twists and stuff that's the type of movie that i actually will like sit and binge watch that genre i'll go through all the streaming services and be like where can i find some and what i don't see when i'm binge watching and trying to find them is black gay ones and if there is a black gay one maybe a black gay one that's like very quality done so i'm just so excited because our script is so careful and so just, ooh, the details are there. So in the acting and the producing of it, we just had a really great team involved and it just naturally all happened so fast and everything really worked out. So I, that's one of the ones I'm most excited for. And that's the one that's releasing the soonest out of all my projects, I believe. We gonna die, at least you know, it'll be everybody. It won't just be like the one token black person, you know? So one person died, we can root for other people. You know? Exactly, exactly. It's no tokens in this one. This is black and gay. Well, maybe there might be a couple token straights in it or something. But if anything, black and gay is the majority. And that's what I like to see because we don't get to see that a lot. And especially in the different genres, we don't see that a lot. So actually going off of that, right? Being a black man, being a gay man, being a man in general, like how have you seen representation change over the last few I would say years, because it seems like years and like now people are, are kind of starting to get what that word really means, you know? Yeah, I think that it's been really cool to just see the difference in what representation is like on screen and just in the media and entertainment versus when we were growing up. Because when we were growing up, the one show that I think there was available was Noah's Ark. And I was only 10 at the time and in the closet. So I missed out on that while that was coming out. And now with people having, you know, Pose and Legendary and even For the Boys, which is an amazing web series, and, you know, just so many different Black gay content creators. And even when it comes to musicians, thinking about Lil Nas and Santana and Dre Bay. And there's just so many Black gay people who are making art and feeling like, you know what? 
we have the opportunity to actually be represented and be seen. We are the culture. We are where so much of it originates from. So it's beautiful to see people starting to get more. But I mean, I still think we deserve more. Like I think Santana deserves more. I think Dre Bay deserves more. You know, there's so many different um, people in the entertainment and media who are black and gay that still, you know, we need to keep pushing for them to get bigger budgets and for them to get more and more opportunities. So I like that things are moving in this direction because we should have a whole Netflix full of different black gay, you know, options. I'm not trying to be no, like, you know, one black gay option destination. No, there's lots of us out here that make really dope content. So we should be able to have the black gay community like, okay, great. We can choose from, you know, this whole list of 15, 20 different creators because maybe they won't like my stuff, but they're like somebody else's or maybe not something else, but something else. You know, people should have those options instead of there being the black gay show or the black gay uh, singer or rapper or something like that. So I think we still have work to do, but I'm glad that, you know, it's moving in the right direction. No, oh, that's a very beautiful thing, especially like image like growing up, like you said, Noah's Ark. I didn't know about that till I got older. Right? Exactly. Like growing up, seeing on TV, if they were gay people, they were mostly white like my first realization of seeing somebody that was like me was teal tequila the shot of love like the bisexual thing but like it was on mtv and it was still mostly white people so i'm like okay i see myself but i don't see myself you know right so no i think that's a beautiful thing a beautiful concept to have like now we got little kids that hopefully won't have to grow up and go through that whole self-hatred self you know, what am I doing here? You know, all of that terrible mm -hmm. stuff that, you know, most of us went through. So I think that is a very beautiful concept to have. Yeah, that's real because when I grew up, like at my school, there was only gonna be like maybe one or two token gay people. You weren't gonna really see many gay people on TV. And on like my sports teams, you know, there weren't really openly gay people. So it was like, where was I really interacting or seeing many? There weren't many places. So it felt like, okay, I'm just going to be the odd one out. So it was cool when I, and also I'm from Detroit, which although it's the blackest city in America, it's also very much so a church town. So it's like known for its homophobia in a way. So there's not the same type of black gay scene. It's more of a DL scene in Detroit. So when I moved away from Detroit after college, when I graduated from Michigan and moved to New York, it was my first time like being in black gay spaces and parties and clubs and shit. I was like, oh, wow. So we, for the first time, I just felt like, wow, this side of myself, I can just, you know, do whatever the fuck I want to do. And so now that also ends up translating on um, social media in ways because it's like you know I'm a the content I make I'm not gonna shy away from the gay side we'll just say you know I'm very much so going to just be myself and have those spaces so I also appreciate it I grew over time because when I decided to you know go into entertainment and things and knew that I wanted to be making black gay content and decided, you know, I need to find where are the black gay people on social media. When I started just reaching out, you know, finding those, the community basically on Twitter and Instagram, that also just kind of helped open my world up. And so now having so much of a community, like not only in LA or in New York or even in Detroit, because I have black gay friends in Detroit too. Now having that online too is important for me. It's funny because when I was a kid, I would have never imagined me being able to like do the stuff I do now and be comfortable. But now I'm just at a place of, you know, it all just helped me get so comfortable with myself that I don't even look at it as crazy. I just be like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this today. Like, oh, yeah, this video, gay's doing this or something like that. And to me, it's not even crazy anymore. I'm just like, oh, whatever. But to a lot of people, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of adults who are in the closet. So I hope that, you know, people who watch or see are able to feel like, okay, yeah, I can just live my, like, live their truth too. Because I'm really at a point where I don't even think twice about it anymore at this point. Like, if there's, you know, homophobic people out there or whatever, I don't really think too much about them. Like, that's kind of their business, not mine. <laughs> Like, you just be free and just be going at it, especially them TikToks. You be going at people, trolling people, trolling the stands, trolling the gays, you trolling the seeds. I be like, oh, oh, okay, this will be going with. I mean, even when you called out Baltimore, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> wrong. 
Like he's not wrong, but oh, you know. <laughs> It's funny because I got inspired by the Baltimore um, little locked up thing by somebody in the comments when I posted part one because they were like, where is Baltimore? And then somebody responded to them like they in jail or locked up or something. So and I was cracking up. So some of the times the ones I put in, especially for a part two, end up being kind of inspired by some of the very funny comments um, after I post part one. And people be like, where is my city or where is my, you know, queen or something like that and then they saying something funny and i'll be like okay this is good i gotta you know represent y'all <laughs> so yeah no i enjoy i'm i'm doing this next one i'm nervous to drop it i did gaze at the gym i recorded this like a week ago i've just been a little nervous to drop it so. <laughs> listen don't 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 try to get canceled now oh <laughs> uh, that's why i'm like hmm i don't know about this one but <laughs> It's just the truth, but I'm like, huh, do I really want to, do I really want to, you know, expose the game? <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you know, some, listen, they always say there's a little bit of truth in every joke. There is, there is. <laughs> just going back, like you said, you went from Detroit to New York to L.A., and you recently talked about your ambitions there. So I want to ask you if you want to, you know, expand upon that a little bit more and also how much of yourself did you put into that series? Yeah, so Ambition, the showrunner and creator um, and director of Ambition is Destiny Cole, who actually went to the same college as me. She's a couple years younger though. So she and her two friends, Drew and Taylor, who are also like a part of the creative team of the series, they moved out here in August of last year. And so the series actually was kind of inspired somewhat by um, their experience moving out here and all being creatives in the industry. And so now being a writer producer on it is crazy because a lot of the themes of stuff that some of the characters have gone through or experienced from people in the industry and particularly uh, older people in the industry because you know, it's very significant, you know, kind of the higher, how certain people in Hollywood can treat the hierarchy of age is very um, distinct. So it's been unfortunate in some ways that uh, I have related to the characters, like how they've been mistreated by people and just kind of, you know, people who want to try to, you know, use you and then, you know, to take advantage of, you know, wherever you are and stuff like that. But then also, really only be doing it for self gain. So then kind of like want to fuck you over later. So it's been frustrating in some ways, honestly, to live somewhat of the um, truth of the show because it, it's real. And even like Lena Waits series, 20s, I'm sure like partly covers it, you know? It's just the reality of being 20 something in the industry. It is a certain beast. And even being 30 something in the industry, you know, you're treated a certain way by people who are in their 40s. It's like, depending on the decade you're in, people are in different phases of their life and their journeys. And, you know, Hollywood is in some ways a place where, you know, everybody's kind of reaching for whatever they're reaching for. So sometimes you're a chess piece in, you know, their goals, but not always treated like a human. Everything you just said, you know, navigating different spaces, understanding how some people move, manipulate, all of that. What would you say is the best advice you've been given in this career path and what advice would you give to somebody else? I would say um, some of the best advice I would say is make sure that you are just very meticulous with any contract for anything you're working on. Just make sure that all of the contract, like, cause I've done certain things before and been doing, you know, a lot out of the goodness of my heart. And you can't always do that because then if people kind of are switching up, and you were just trusting them instead of like actually contractually doing things, that's when then it can get annoying. So, I mean, that's one of the good pieces of advice um, that for now on, like I'm just making sure that any, you know, type of situation I'm working on, you know, I just got to make sure I'm protected on paper because um, for certain things, it was natural to easily make sure like with flip flop getting picked up, that was natural, you know, the contract, of course, with that show was going to be easy to make sure I was, but certain things, you know, some people just reach out, you know, sometimes it's more casual and you just have to make sure that on the legal end and business end, just making sure that you know what you're getting out of every situation. Cause it's good to do things out of the goodness of your heart 
Um, but the other reality is that, you know, we all have to make money. We all have to be paid because we only have so many hours in the day. So I would just make sure to be structuring everything so that you're benefiting others and that those situations also benefit you. Another good piece of advice is don't become like the people who, you know, you may encounter that'll do you wrong. You don't really get ahead by becoming those people. You stick to yourself and just trust that, you know, being yourself and being a good person and being a human and treating people like humans will get you still far. You don't have to be negative. I mean, I tell myself every day, you know, I just gotta, I gotta stick to me. This is who I am. I'm not gonna, yeah, being too nice has gotten me in some situations that have annoyed me, but it's like, I would rather be me and, you know, just have to get past that than be like those people and then deal with the consequences of, you know, acting ridiculously, so. <laughs>